right, Monday morning, I'm in Houston, Texas, on my way back from Operation Frontline with the uh, Lovesat crews out here. Gonna kind of do a weekend mashup, focusing on uh, the sixth habit of the get off the couch ethos. Play along the way leads so nicely into make your mindset, which is what you gotta do every morning, beginning of each week, each month, each year. Get in the right mindset to seize the opportunities. Here we go. Saturday morning cartoon. That's a good tradition. We're gonna go to a diner and go get breakfast together. Yay! Which one? Pepper, it looks like you're ready to go to the diner. Letting mommy sleep in while we get a pancake breakfast. Chocolate, oh, yeah. a chocolate chip pancake breakfast. <laughs> Just the five of us. Looks like we're not the only ones with this idea. <laughs> What's up, guys? Pajama party. It is a pajama party. What do you know? The silver dollar pancakes are very small. Like and they have chocolate chips in them, and you get a bunch. What did Strawberry? Why is your name Strawberry? Okay, this is the best. Nope, it's the best thing. <laughs> why does why do the seagulls fly up? I mean, what does the seagulls fly over the sea? Why? Because if they fly over the bay, they'll be called bagels. <laughs> Dude, that's a good joke. Why would mommy get mad, Pepper? Because she doesn't want us to really get sugar. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm licking the syrup. Is it good? Huh? Every now and then, you gotta break the norm, do something unexpected and play along the way. Habit six of the get off the couch ethos. Play along the way or you'll just grow old. I love your outfit. Hello, you. you go with mommy. Yeah. Hey dude, who are those for? Lucky. Say hurry up. Let's go. Close. You brought your own snacks. The fire was burning cheerfully, the tree was lighted, the moon was shining. The land of sweets. Good job, Lucky. We beat you! Oh, man. Valentine, yeah, thanks for holding the gate. Stepped on him. Stepped on what? Look how cute he is! Oh my gosh. Some of the cutest... Catch him! Catch him! Hi! That is like the cutest mouse ever. I just see someone's crush him! Come here! Hey, do you want to be our pet? I want him so bad. Oh my no, gosh, look how cute he is! <laughs> Dude, Jesus. I want him. I want him. Come here, jump in my hands. Come here. That's a good idea. Bro. Come here. No, it's fine. Go oh, give him a bath. Get him, dude. Catch him. Catch him, buddy. Catch him. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I took him out. I took him out. Where did he go? Ah, oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. We got him. I touch him. Oh, I almost. He'll bite. He'll hey. bite. Oh, I touch him. Oh, he's on the other ship. <laughs> hey, go. Okay, I got him. <gasps> Oh. Shoot, I hope I didn't hurt. Did you hurt? Hey, we cut! Oh my Let's gosh! Let's bring it! How cute oh, is he? Bring it home! Run! Bring it home! Mom! Oh, he's gonna jump. Let's bring it home! Let's bring it home! Hey, okay, careful, careful, he's gonna jump. Be careful, don't come down. Here, yeah, touch him. Feel him. No. It's like texture. It's a texture. <laughs> 
No, 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 buddy, don't grab him because I don't want him to jump out and get lost. Hey! No, stop! <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, crap! I feel bad. Let him go. Oh, well, he looks like, like he has a mean face mice, right now. Mice, mice. Oh, he's got a mean face right now. Look at that mean face. He's planning something. Hello, is he dead? We should either put him in a cage and keep him, or he should die. What do you mean he should die? I mean, that's what mouse traps are for. He should die. I mean, I don't want him to die, but... Dude, who are you? The judge and jury and sentence him to death? That's what mouse traps are for. Wait! Because oh, mice eat his stuff Chinese. and they breed. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, let him go out! Let him go Dude, out! Dude, we're making this Lucky's Christmas present. No! Jump everywhere! It's either a cage... Or let him go out the door! Or he dies. Make him... Well, we just no, let him out where he was choice. before. This He'll freeze out choice. there. It's getting really Make cold. Him Okay, let's go. We're gonna let him go back to his home. He's a field now, so we'll let him go in the field. Okay. Hey, Pepper. Come on. Let him just let him go by the pumpkin. Dump him out by the pumpkin, Duke. No. Bye, Mr. Mouse. Let him go. No, oh, by the pumpkin. Nobody right here by the pumpkin, so he has food. He has food. Another day, another airport. Atlanta on my layover up en route to Houston, where we're going to do an Operation Frontline. That is, uh, you know, one of these late night store training sessions. And uh, just laying over for an extra minute here to go grab breakfast with my niece Jessica, who happens to be working for Lubsack at our Atlanta store right now in the winter time. She's actually just doing it on the weekends because uh, she got an internship at Porsche. Uh, she's still in college, but taking a break to do this internship and um, and work at Lovesack on the weekends, which is cool. So I won't get a chance to hang out with the Atlanta team. I will get a chance to have breakfast with my niece, who I rarely see, so it should be fun. You see, it's worth mentioning this because taking the time, I actually had to rebook my flight, tweak it, um, because originally I hadn't thought of stopping here. I was flying through here, but Jessica had texted me and said, you should, you know, come to Atlanta sometime. And, and I said, sorry, I won't be able to before the holiday, before you're done with your internship. But it turns out that, you know, I had this layover and I was able to stretch my flight, go through a little bit of hassle, but it uh, falls right in line with today's topic, which is play along the way. And this is a perfect example. You gotta take advantage of the time you have uh, as you're building something, as you're going through it, because if you don't, you know, your life just gets by you and, you, and it takes an effort, man. Like, I had to rebook my flight, I had to, like, change it all. You know, it was Jessica's idea, she said, um, hey, you know, why don't you stop here on one of your layovers? So you never have time. <laughs> yeah, foot above it! You never have time uh, to do these things until you don't. And then you look back and you'll never regret it, you know? taking the time to play along the way, taking the time to make personal connections, taking the time to always see family if you're in town, wherever that may be. You see, the two habits go together perfectly. Both focus on your personal, mental, physical, spiritual health. Let me explain. So, um, when my, as an example, when my niece Jessica texted me and said, hey, you know, please come down to Atlanta, let's do a front line down here. And I said, it's not, you know, it's not on my priority list at this moment. Um, Got to stay on schedule. She said, well, at least stop throwing one of your layovers. Okay. You know, at least it was, I didn't, you know, respond. I, I, I took a look and sure enough, I had a layover in Atlanta on my way to Houston coming up. Now, I had to wait until like the day of to make a change like that to my flight. But basically, I knew that it would be possible. So I had to be first and foremost in that open-minded, spontaneous mindset that we talk about each week as habit number one of the get off the couch ethos, right? Make your mindset. And that's the mindset I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just, you know, get prepared mentally and, you know, read books and work out. I'm talking about a specific mindset. 
an open-minded mindset, a spontaneous mindset, the kind of mindset that allows you to go do something today. The whole crux of the get off to the couch ethos. If you don't have that mindset, you're not gonna recognize the opportunity when it comes along. You're not gonna be sitting on the couch at your parents' house eating a bowl of Captain Crunch when a big beanbag pops in your head. So instead of just, you know, moving on with the show, you get off the couch, you go down to the fabric store, you buy the fabric and you make it. And that was the whole genesis for this entire, you know, ethos that I am promoting. And so look, you play along the way, habit six, right? Because if you don't, entrepreneurship, building something will eat you up and make you old before you even realize it's happened. I have been dirt biking in the Gobi Desert in China on a sourcing trip. I've been swimming in the ocean in Los Angeles on you know store visits early in the morning. I've been on a racing sailboat, in fact, the fastest racing sailboat in the world in the harbor of Sydney, Australia, visiting the store down there. And today, I will be hanging out with my beautiful and talented niece who I don't see enough of. And, and it's not because I'm a great uncle. She had to remind me, hats off to her, you know. It's, but it is because I have the right mindset. I have the get off the couch mindset, which says be open to any and all suggestions and be spontaneous and play along the way before you grow old like me. All right. All right, so this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The mindset. So Jessica uh, calls me one day and says, hey, I've got this opportunity to do this internship in Atlanta. George, I've never been to Atlanta. I don't even know what Atlanta's about. Um, but, uh, you know, it sounds pretty cool. You know, what do you think? And, and what do you think my answer? What was my answer, Jessica? Go. He told me to go. Told her to go. So, so how do you feel now? Was it's been good. It's been a lot of fun. Lots of work. I no ended regrets? Up, I ended up working at the Love Sack store too. No, no regrets. No regrets? No regrets. Yeah, so Jessica was like, you know, I, I don't know, you know, because what? I guess she could have stayed and gotten more school than been done with school practically. Yeah. And now, you know, it's going to take longer. And I said to her, honestly, I had the same experience. That's what kicked me off was I took this internship in Shanghai, China which completely opened my mind, you know, I mean, and, and in fact, so how are you feeling about going home now? I don't want to go. Right? I mean, yeah, I, no, it's, it's been fun, but. What's been the biggest takeaway about yourself? What have you learned about yourself? <laughs> I've actually grown a lot. I think when you're on the other end of the country, away from your family, and you have to work and make your own decisions and manage your boss or your work while you're on your own two feet, it's been really good and I think I learned that I'm really capable of doing that at this point. When I, I know I've always been one of those people that's go, 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 very independent, but doing it so far away has been really good for me. Tender age of 20, she's out here on her own, working at Porsche, yeah, yeah. the car company, <laughs> that Porsche, yeah. and, and Love Sack, oh yeah, that company loves it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so as a bonus, we're heading over to Porsche. What? Jessica got the coolest internship on the planet, so we're gonna go check it out. Let's be a first. Nice. All right, we're gonna do a tour of Porsche North America's headquarters after hours. We're not even operating. So that one's cool too, but uh, look at that one. Look at that mess of modern design. Oh wait, what? That's an insane sculpture.
how cool this is. So this concept car uh, was never manufactured, but the idea was you could pop the top off and have a true track racer. Looks like it was what, from the 80s? Yeah, usually the Bronco went to the 80s. And, um, and then you have these Porsche 356s that were the original concept cars uh, that really started the whole scene going. Really cool stuff. Thanks for bringing me, Jess. Yeah. This is amazing. I told you it would be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so there I'm you go. Breakfast, right? Play along the way. Take the time to live. <laughs> if see, if I had really been on my game, I would have uh, booked ahead and done a driving experience while we were out here. Isn't it great to be 20? Yeah, and not know what you're doing? Yeah, see, my, my future was sealed when I made a big beanbag. I didn't even know it. I didn't even want to start that business. Yeah. So I just kept doing and the next happened. thing. Oh, it just kind of happened. That's how this started out, though. Very poor, she couldn't find a car. So we built a Yeah. All right, Jessica, so thank you for the tour of Porsche. Anytime. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> As a car guy, never owned a Porsche. Not yet. But not yet, but... Um, <laughs> Definitely appreciate that. So tell me this, um, mm -hmm. what, so on the, on the vlog today, we're talking about two concepts, right? Habit one, which is make your mindset, and habit six, right? Because it's a weekend, we're coming off the weekend here. Um, play along the way. So, so this idea that, you know, as we're out hustling, doing our education, doing our internships, doing our, you know, everyday work, how do you play along the way, Jessica? How do you make sure that you never are just letting time get by you? You drive fast cars. <laughs> there you go. Good advice from a smart girl. And who knows whether her future with, with Porsche will continue after she finishes school. But it's, we'll it, it's uh, great advice, you know, to take opportunities when they come, be in that open mindset to jump on things and, and, and take the risks and do I mean, she's had to move out here alone. Yeah. <laughs> make friends, you know, find a place to live. And I'm very proud of her. But, you know, whether she continues with Porsche or not doesn't matter. I think so many times opportunities like this are about, not just about finding what, you know, we want to do the rest of our lives necessarily, but maybe also finding what, what we don't like, you know. And you can only find it with experience. Yeah. A lot of people get into an industry or a job or, or a company and they kind of get stuck there. Yeah. Because they, they start there and they just keep going there. And so it's really cool that you've had this opportunity while you're young, right? So everyone who's, who's you know, has, has flexibility like that, take it to go do things. And don't worry about if it makes a career for you a Porsche or not or whatever, because just having done this now, you, you know more about what life is really like, what work life is really like. Yeah. That's super powerful. Exactly. It's been really great. That's super powerful. Mm -hmm. I'll try. Grandma would it's not gonna love happen. it. Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're East Coasters, man. Flying with us is a whole row. Got to book six tickets. Houston. So if you know me, then you know I spend a big portion of my November and December out in stores doing these frontline visits with, you know, the staff on the front line. And uh, just one more comment about this concept of play along the way. The best part about being an entrepreneur, the best part about aligning your personal uh, vision, your purpose with your work, is that then as they say, work is never work. And you're sort of always playing. These uh, front lines have changed over the years, like the content, what I do, but um, it's always been fun. And even though it's arduous and I'm out till midnight, you know, day after day doing these things, work is play. And uh, at least to some degree. Work is play. The Woodlands Mall. This store was actually the first prototype of our old store model back in 2010. Love Sack, Houston, Texas, the Woodlands. What's up? What's going on? What's up, dude? How are you guys doing? All right, so as it turns out, Josh works here at Love Sack for a year and a half. Haven't met him. First time meeting him, Houston, Woodlands, Texas. Um, and you were a customer first. Four years ago. Four years yes, ago. And, four and years tell me ago. about, so you, so you are like a walking, 
breathing example of Satchel's durability. Tell me about that. Absolutely. So we worked at a boys' home, eight seats and ten sides, and we had 15 teenage boys in our home up to the age of 19. These were not small boys. Perfect they testing were, age. They, we, they wanted to jump off the top floor into my super sack a number of times. I wasn't quite comfortable with that one. Yeah. But uh, I would walk in the they house. They did it when you weren't looking. They probably, I have no doubt. Uh, I walk in one day, they're throwing pieces at each other. They fought with them every Friday night. We had a movie night. My wife would say, go set the couch up how you want to. We wash the covers every week. Every week. And now we're home. We the same chocolate padded velvet. That so this I, was your couch. This was my couch. You took it to the boys' home and took it, it with you. And every boy there, when I go home, this is what I'm getting. This is what I want. This is the greatest. We all want a sack. It was great. How cool is that? So Adam, Adam's yeah, gone tool time on us. Taylor, right. screwdriver, to break the ice cream out of its right. hey, ice you, shell. You need ice cream, man. You need ice cream. We're not playing around. So. That's right. So we are in the dregs of the mall right now. The back hallway is where the real business goes to. <laughs> Spent a lot of time back here, believe it or not. Opening stores, moving stuff in, whatever. So I'm with Adam. What up? I love Sack legend in his own right. Adam, how long have you been with Love Sack? 12 years. What? Yep. So uh, pretty much just doing a tour of Texas. So Dallas Galleria, Stonebriar, Arboretum, Woodlands, I'll go wherever. So. Yeah, Dallas, yep. right? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, that's where I'm from. Houston. Yep. And before that, Austin. That's right. And so I'm just always, I'm always like so happy when I see Adam because He's just an old school sacker. We've had a lot of interesting times together. We have, there's some stories. There's some stories as we emerge into them all. So, so Adam, just one question for you. All right. After 12 years, why have you stuck with Love Sack? Oh, um, man, I, I hate to say the obvious answer, but it's the people. I mean, the product's great, the vibe is great, the people make it. Um, when you get to uh, get together like this, um, it's, uh, it's like going to church. You it's know? like going to church. So uh, it's a religion. I, that's right. I I love it. It it it. I really do live in the, and breathe love sack. And I've owned Saxwells for forever. And why would I give up a, a discount on new covers? You know. <laughs> no, I I can't even tell you how thankful I am for sackers like Adam, who've literally built this company like one one customer at a time. There's no other way to do it yet. Yep. Right, yep. like we're just too small, no yep. one knows about us relative to the world. Yep, shout out Spin, Kelly Duncan, Tyler Perry. Shout There's out. a lot of people out there that are that are that have been doing it doing it just like me. That's so. right. We have a lot of longtime sackers like Adam, but super it's nothing. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> like I had to make an adjustment. I finally understood why Lizzie had And I, I've been here for six months, and I can really see how it's opened up my personality and everything. Being able to talk to people the moment they walk in the door. I really enjoy what I do here. I really enjoy the team that I work with. Uh, it's definitely family when you walk into the Love Sack store, regardless if it's our store, if it's Arboretum, Dallas, Dallas Galleria, sorry, I was thinking of Houston. I just, it feels like home to a lot of people, and for me, it definitely does. Um, I wake up every day excited to get to the store and when I get home I'm gosh Barbara and I are still talking about work <laughs> I'm Barbara I'm the store leader over at Stonebriar and Frisco and it's marking about four and a half years been with the company it feels like forever and I just I absolutely love it it's um, definitely a different world from traditional furniture it's no comparison and um, I just love the change of people's lives Plus, I'm also on social media for quite a bit. It's an understatement. Social, social media guru. I have been here a little bit over a year. I just celebrated my one year. I came from selling lingerie. Victoria's <laughs> Secret. At the other love sex store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, April, no, I love driving, so I told the customer, I said, I'll come and set it up for you. So I told her, I said, let's go on a trip. <laughs> and she was like, what kind of trip? I said, bring a t-shirt and something comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this is before she worked here. Yeah, before she worked here. So we went out to the ranch and we did a 30-piece setup. Oh, oh my God. It wasn't it wasn't it was, Yeah, it wasn't. We worked. How many of you have ever seen this curve in your life? If you're a business student, you've seen it. 
basically this is the technology adoption curve, okay? And what it's saying, like think about when the iPod came out. Did you know that when the iPod came out, Apple stock fell for a year straight? Because no one thought it would work. I mean, as we know, the iPod is what turned that company around. I don't think that Sean can wake up in the day and be like, ah, I don't want to go be CEO, and you wouldn't be able to look Doreen in the face, you know? Ah. <laughs> so That's right. I, I think there's like some things like that. There's a lot of people that have, you know, made sacrifices when you work with people closely. You don't just do it for yourself, you do it for them too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. Shoe shot. Shoe shot. <laughs> Barbara! Hold on. Subscribe to Sean's blog. Thumbs up. Oh my gosh. Is that good or bad? Oh, it's blog. a vlog. Oh my gosh. Subscribe to Sean's blog. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up that. <laughs> Woo! Can I get a selfie real quick? Yes.